Uh, yeah, Mr. Jeffrey, what's the process called when you get like one seed and then you take the seeds from that plant and then you keep expanding your farm? That's still going to be seed planting. Okay. We do not grow in the crop and then splitting the crop. But as long as you're still using the seeds, uh, that's still going to be seed planting. Good question. Anything else? I have a question about the like chapter eight. Should I ask that now or? I uh, save that for later. Because I'm going to put this all up, and I want it to be all contained in this one chapter for people who aren't here. All right, let's move on then. Uh, Keisha two, why do people consume different foods? Uh, I think there's only a slide or two. Obviously, in developed countries, uh, beef, pork, and poultry, um, mostly because that's more expensive. Uh, we have the wealth to eat more meat products. Uh, developing countries, unfortunately, more grains and crops because that's something they have to grow. Uh, even a cow or something like that in a poor country is very expensive. Um, so they're going to eat more crop-like foods. Uh, we're rich and we can afford those other things. Uh, key issue three, where is agriculture distributed? You know, you don't have to memorize the climates around the world, obviously, but it's important to know where particular climates are. Obviously, you can see through the middle of the planet here, it's quite green, and that's tropical. That's going to play an important role because that's obviously where a large portion of the population lives as well. And they have to because they have to grow food 12 months out of the year, right? They're mostly subsistence agriculture farmers growing enough for their family. And so they've got to live in those humid low latitudes. When we say low latitude, and I'll go back, that's referring to the close to the equator, right? That's what they mean by low latitude. Because they got to grow food 365 days a year. Uh, so the climate is suitable for doing that, obviously. There's no winters. Um, here, here's what they're doing. Though. They're using shifting cultivation. If you remember that from this earlier in the year, they use slash and burn techniques. They basically cut down all of the trees, as you can see in the picture on the left, and I start burning it. Uh, is anyone from One White here today? One White, why, why do they burn all the bushes and branches and so forth? I believe it's to clear a path for more agricultural businesses. And I think the fact that if you burn the stuff, it'll, um, there's got to be some sort of uh, natural fertilizer. Makes the soil better. Yeah, it's fertilizer. Uh, trees are carbon, right? And so putting the carbon back into the soil uh, makes it more nutritious. The problem is th this works but it only works for three, four, five years, whatever it may be, it's a short amount of time. Uh, the soil then becomes very unfertile again. Uh, they move down the road and perform the same task again, unfortunately. Um, this is why, you know, we're worried about this because it's obviously destroying the rainforest, which are the lungs of the planet. They're soaking in all that carbon. And it's unfortunate this is happening, but these people obviously have to do it because they need to feed themselves. They don't have the technology and the fertilizers and the pesticides and the tractors and everything to grow products on a commercial type farm. Um, but the, the key is, if you can remember what they're doing with shifting cultivation, they're, they're cutting it down and they're and burning all of uh, the wood products before they move on after several years. Uh, of course, this was all Leonardo DiCaprio's fault, if you remember from earlier in the year. The president of Brazil blamed him for <laughs> all the forest fires that were happening down there in the fall. Uh, no, that's not true. Leonardo DiCaprio did not go to Brazil and set the forest on fire. Uh, in MDCs, we're, we're more of a mixed crop and livestock. Uh, and more times than not, the, the crops that are grown on the farm are then used for livestock, not all the time. Uh, but they, they use multiple crops and multiple livestock uh, to increase their income, right? Um, especially in a year when it was maybe a pandemic or something. Uh, you don't wanna have one crop that may not be needed or the prices crash or a bug suddenly destroys all your broccoli. Uh, you need to have you know multiple sources of income 
Uh, but they also prefer livestock too, because that's also where most of their money comes from. As we just talked about uh, livestock, whether it's pork, uh, cows, whatever, uh, they produce more money. Uh, and we also use more of a crop rotation. We don't see that as much in LDC. Uh, does anyone from 3RED know what crop rotation is or why we use it? Is it crop rotation where they have different crops? So if you continue to grow the same crop, it'll deplete like the specific nutrients out of that soil. So like say you grow corn one year and then like soybeans the next, it'll keep like the soil like fresh with like the nutrients needed. Yeah, exactly. It, it, different crops soak up different nutrients out of the soil. And even though, one of the key terms, fallow, they won't use some of the land for a year or two. They just like kind of regenerate on its own, uh, grow clover in it or something. Um, yeah, you need kind of rotate things around and it kind of keeps your soil healthier. Uh, the most frequent crop we use is corn. And if you remember from the movie, food and corn isn't everything. And that's why we prefer to use corn. Uh, it's an oil, margarine. We feed it uh, to the pigs and cattle. Uh, we feed it to them because it fattens up, up faster, uh, so they can sell them faster and make a profit faster. All right, we all remember this guy, I hope, uh, Von Thunen. The, the key here is the importance to the market, right? Uh, but the key as well is not is, is your location to the market, the city, uh, but your transportation costs. So obviously, as we talked about this earlier in the year. You've got your city in the center of the circle there. The horticulture and dairy were the closest ring. Now remember, there's 1826. There's no trains yet. Uh, horticulture and dairy would have to be closest to the market because of the perishable item. And so obviously there's no refrigerated trucks at that, in those days. You had to have your cows, dairy cows, as close to the city as you could, and then get it to the market and sell it as fast as you can because who wants to drink chunky milk? Um, same go. You know, also see you know delicate flowers and things like that in those earlier rings. Uh, some more perishable fruits that might get damaged in a long travel process. Tomatoes that comes to mind. You know, you don't want tomatoes bouncing around. They'll not be very good by the time they get there. Uh, back then, though, the, the forestry ring is the second ring. Um, does anyone from one white know why the forestry ring was so close back then? Uh, nobody knows. How about someone from Four White? It's because trees are heavy and burn water or burn wood in the fires. Yeah, there are a bunch of people talking, but I think I heard it. Yeah, it's heavy. Again, you know, part of this, this model is transportation costs. It's kind of the same thing we were talking about in industry. Trees back then were very hard to move, uh, and so you want them close. And they were used more often. I remember people heated their homes with trees, they built their homes with trees, and they cooked their food with trees. And so you needed that that access to the, the wood uh, much easier. So obviously as you get farther from the city, uh, products are gonna be less perishable uh, and they're also gonna be lighter in weight. And so that grazing ring uh, all the way out to the farthest ring uh, is gonna be mostly wheat. It's very, it's less perishable, it's very light. Uh, that's where the cows would also graze that they would be eventually slaughtered for food. And if you remember, you're going, wait a minute, well, aren't cows heavy? Well, they didn't really have to transport the cows back then uh, because the slaughterhouses were within the city. And so they would actually walk the cows themselves to the city. And then the slaughterhouses were in the city and then they'd slaughter them and then put the meats in the market. Um, so the transportation, obviously, the cow's walking himself. Are there any transportation costs with, associated with that? No. There's not. So um, that's why the cows could be so far away. The dairy cows, obviously, are closer to the mill. Wait. Uh, wait yeah, go ahead. Is the – is, like, uh, the, their position in the ring, isn't that, like, based on how much labor they need? Or That's, like, I read that somewhere. I don't – Labor plays a role. Um, but the, the, the key here is perishability and transportation. Uh, per, uh, the labor in all of these 
practices in eighteen in the early eighteen hundreds was pretty equal. But you gotta remember this is prior to the steam engine, basically everything was moved around with horse and carriage. And so you're looking at where the, What about the ahead. model that's modified by a river? Like with the um wood, couldn't you just float it down the river to the city? Yeah, and so that's why you're going to see if you look, that forestry ring can extend a little bit farther away from the city, right? Because now you've got boats that you can use for transportation. And so dairy can get a little bit farther away, not too much. Uh, but a heavy product like wood can be extended far away. Uh, crops can be extended far away. So yeah, the river in the early 1800s, obviously, is a transportation mode that's going to kind of expand it a little bit. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. All right, so remember, you're looking at two costs when you decide where you're going to put your farm. Obviously, the cost of the land versus transportation to your market. Obviously, if you have a very cheaply moved product like wheat, uh, you can have that far away. So your transportation cost might be a little bit higher because you're farther away. But is the land going to be cheaper in that outer ring? Yeah, because it's farther away from the city. The transportation costs for the dairy uh, are very minimal because they're so close to the market. But is that land is offset because the land there is also more expensive. So it kind of balances itself out. So that's why we look at the land versus the transportation. It kind of all should ring a bell as we talked about industry in Chapter 11. Uh, they're kind of the same concept. Um, there's a couple of things that obviously aren't play, play a role in here. Obviously, government policies play a much bigger role in 2020 than they do in 1826. Um, and social customs have obviously changed. What we mean by social customs is people's diets have changed since 1826. And we do eat more meat and poultry and things like that than we used to, uh, less vegetables than we used to, unfortunately. But it's been 200 years. So obviously this is a lot has changed uh, over the course of time. And you can see uh, two big changes right there in those pictures. Um, we have obviously got better modes of transportation uh, and obviously the machinery we're using to grow the crops has obviously changed. And now those farms can be farther and farther and farther away. So now if you applied it today, this is how his rings would look, right? Now, if the market were New York City, the vegetables would still want to be close um, because they're still somewhat perishable and get damaged in transport. But look how far the forestry ring is now. It moves way out there. Same with the beef and the wheat uh, because transportation, refrigerated trucks, uh, we've modified the vegetables so they can be grown farther away. And really this map isn't 100% accurate because in January, where does New York get their vegetables from? Other places, isn't it like Columbia and Chile? Yeah, some will come from the West Coast, not a ton, but a lot of times we'll get uh, South American crops. And when you're eating a banana in January, obviously we didn't grow it here. Uh, we're getting those crops from Latin America somewhere. And someone mentioned Chile, that's one place, Argentina, Brazil, uh, wherever it might be. All right, last key issue. Uh, why do farmers face sustainability?